Hi, I'm Lauren Good. I'm a senior writer at Wired, and today we're going to be talking about. No. Um, today we're going to be talking about user experience design. Specifically, we're going to be speaking. Sorry, can we do that again? Notifications, they're incessant. I get something like 80 notifications per day, and some people get as many as four times more notifications than they'd like to, according to one study that we looked at. So unless you've turned off notifications entirely, or you've gone the dumb phone route, you might be feeling frustrated too. So I've spent the past couple weeks trying to get to the bottom of how we got here with notifications, and what notifications are doing to our stress levels and our productivity, and how they might be fixed. I talked with a psychological researcher. If you get a notification, it has a visceral physiological response in your body. A professor who studies distraction. I see an opportunity here for ironically developing technology to help people deal with technology. And a designer who developed some of the earliest smartphone notifications. Every piece of technology, every, every design that you create, you're trying to solve a problem. And sometimes you introduce unintended consequences. So how did we get here? Well, in some ways, notifications are nothing new, especially when it comes to communication. There's some sort of call to action. Landlines rang and mailboxes had flags and answering machines blinked, but the internet changed everything. And suddenly that mailbox notification was much more immediate. You've got mail. Hey, I've got mail. And by the early 2000s, that blinking light on your answering machine had become the blinking light of your Blackberry. Since then, those blinks have become buzzes and pings and banners and badges, those little red dots that light up your smartphone screen and let you know just how much stuff you're missing out on. No, notifications stretch you out. Larry Rosen is a research psychologist who studies the effect of technology on us. If you get a notification, it has a visceral physiological response in your body. It releases chemicals. The, the most commonly studied chemical is cortisol but other chemicals in the, in the anxiety realm are also studied. According to Rosen, those chemicals cause all kinds of physical reactions, sweaty palms, queasiness, and the fear of missing out. On little bits and pieces of that, that's normal. That's kind of our daytime routine. But if it's over and over and over and over again, you're constantly getting notifications, beeps, buzzes, vibrations, all of those are contributing to ongoing chemical stress. Maybe you've experienced this, but this notification overload even leads us to imagine that notifications are happening when they're not, like phantom buzzes. Just 10 years ago, if we felt a little tingling down where our pocket is, we would have reached down with our fingernails and scratched the itch. Now, nobody scratches that itch. Everybody believes that it's an incoming message a notification, a vibration. Oh my God, somebody's trying to reach me. In fact, most young people check their phones every 15 minutes or more frequently than that. Once again, for fear of missing out. Half the time, interruptions are from oneself, so they're self-interruptions. Psychologist Gloria Mark studies multitasking and digital interruptions. She says that interruptions don't just cause us stress, they have a profound impact on our overall productivity. And while her team studies different kinds of interruptions, like instant messages and phone calls, notifications are a form of that. When people are interrupted, right, they're, they're not just interrupted and go right back to the task at hand. Nope, we get sidetracked, really sidetracked. It actually takes them about 25 and a half minutes to get back to the original task. And what happens in between is they work on two other tasks. This creates a cognitive burden on people and that's associated with stress and it's also negatively associated with productivity. So an interruption is an interruption, but with an in-person interruption, there are still some social guidelines in place. With digital notifications, they can happen anywhere, all the time. The thing is, notifications were not originally designed to be this way. They weren't even called notifications. Maybe if we talked about them, we'd talk about alerts. To better understand smartphone notifications, I went to see Matias Duarte. Duarte leads the material design team at Google. Years ago, he was the director of design at Android's predecessor, Danger, where he worked on the coolest phone of the early 2000s, the hip top, better known as the sidekick. Now, earlier phones, of course, had very limited communications. A phone like this, the only kind of message you would get would be SMS or a missed call or a voicemail. For this, we wanted to receive 
all sorts of different types of notifications or messages uh, because we wanted you to download apps. And so we had to come up with a, a system for notifying you about them because we couldn't just have a whole bunch of individual indicator lights, you know, you'd run out of room, right? But they didn't think people would want notifications that often. News here is something we thought people might want to hear about on a six hourly basis, oh. right? Email. That would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Email once an hour. Um, and there were some stuff we were certain folks would never want a notification of, like games. Duarte and the Danger team took what was then desktop chatting and tried to take it to mobile. Interestingly, they were trying to solve around a couple problems. One, the standard use case of having a blinking light, you can only fit so many blinking lights on a phone. And two, the sounds. Almost everybody now complains about vibration. Oh gosh, those, those, bzz, bzz, those drive me nuts, right? At the time, vibration was the solution because the, the, the world that people lived in was a world where having a little chime, a ding, 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 all the time, that was normal. Right? And it was starting to get to be too much. The world changes and what people think is appropriate or healthy or expected changes too. And we have to keep engaging with that um, in order to be helpful to people. For better or worse, they also opened up notifications to third-party developers who to this day are still trying to grab whatever sliver of our attention that they can. This has left Duarte with some mixed feelings about how notifications work. All technology is a double-edged sword. And so I feel very happy that I was able to help um, with many, many other people in solving some of the communication problems and making people more connected. And I also feel responsible um, about some of the, the challenges that we've created for some people and some of the unintended consequences. Maybe mostly I feel guilty. <laughs> I feel more bad than good. Um, no, that's not true. I don't feel more bad than good. We were doing a lot of good things you know, for good purpose. But we also need to be wide-eyed and acknowledge that, you know, there were consequences also, however unintended they were. And in so much as I can, oh, there you go, there's your interruption. <laughs> so how do we fix this? For starters, tech companies say they're trying to make notifications more manageable. So starting with iOS 12 on iPhone, for example, notifications were grouped together the same way they have been on Android for years. And you can reply to some notifications, like message notifications, directly from the notification itself on Android. You can put your phone into do not disturb mode, or you can shush your phone, put it face down, and not get bothered by notifications. Both iOS and Android now have built-in dashboards that tell you how many minutes per day you're spending on your phone, what apps you're using the most, and yes, how many notifications you're getting per day. It's not going to fix the problem, but it might let you know that you have a problem because that's how I knew that I had the problem of getting something like 80 notifications. And of course, you can always go into settings and just manually go through each app and figure out which one you want to turn off notifications for. But honestly, it's a little bit painstaking. And I kind of wish that these super smart smartphones that we carry in our pockets were smart enough just to do a little bit more around notifications. Like if I could do this, hey Siri, Turn off my notifications before I go into my next meeting. You want to cancel your meeting? Called Lauren, dentist, at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Is that right? No, I want you to turn off notifications before my next meeting. Okay, I won't delete it. And even though Google's assistant tends to be a little bit smarter, this isn't much better. Hey Google, turn off all notifications before my next meeting. To open Android notification settings, tap notification settings below. And the cycle continues. So that's not great. In the future, these tech companies may use things like artificial intelligence to better determine which notifications are worthy enough to actually interrupt us, but they're just not there yet. Critics say these notifications are something that tech companies really still aren't doing enough to address. Instead, they're just perpetuating the whole attention economy. It is a business and their business is to get your attention, to get your eyeballs, focused on their site, their app, whatever it is. And in order to do that, they have to do several things. One, they have to get you there first. And often the way they get you there first is by either a notification or even if you shut off the notifications, a really slick looking icon. On their home screen, there are usually about 12 to 15 icons on a smartphone that are beckoning at you. Their job is to stand out. 
And others say we might need more technology to help us with our problem with technology. So one of the things that we're exploring through this video is who uh, should carry the burden of fixing notifications. So I can't help but wonder if more of the burden should be on tech companies and app makers, or if it should be on us, the humans, who are text messaging each other all the time and sending each other all kinds of messages and alerts. I don't think anyone is to blame, not any entity is to blame, but I see an opportunity here for ironically developing technology to help people deal with technology. People can, can learn and be empowered to be able to resist notifications. And I think that's where technology can, can help people. One example of that is an app called Daywise, which batches your notifications together and sends them to you at set times throughout the day. So you're not getting flooded with notifications. I've been using Daywise. I have it set to send notifications three times per day, and I find it helpful. Like for example, if I were to check my 3 p.m. batch, I can see that I have nearly 800 Twitter alerts. Not really, but it feels that way. Thanks a lot, Twitter. Thing with Daywise, though, is that it only works on Android, and some of the permissions it requires in order to work well are a little invasive. Also, this is just one app. Okay, so how do we really fix this? Some technologists believe that wearables could be the solution. The idea being, if you have something on your wrist that gives you a little bit of haptic feedback, you're not being distracted all day long by this. Others believe that heads-up displays could be the solution, so that you're getting messages in front of your eyeballs. Although then you're getting messages in front of your eyeballs. So who knows? Others believe that sound design could be the answer. So here's what I want. In addition to thinking hard about the ways in which humans are interacting with each other and messaging each other all the time and using all of these applications, I want these super smart tech companies, the ones that sell us these products and make these platforms, to also think hard about delivering a thoughtful notification experience. Use some of those smarts and those brilliant AI solutions to make notifications a lot more manageable so that it's not just a great software experience, but it's also good for our human wear.